In Lima, Peru, 29-year-old Raquel wonders why she is still suffering from tuberculosis. For years, she's been taking antibiotics, but she remains highly infectious, and her lungs are weak and battered. None of my friends know that I have TB because I'm afraid that they will say, just go away. I feel that if I am rejected, I won't be able to bear the pain, so I would rather not see them. Raquel is used to rejection. Her husband left to avoid getting sick. Now, she and her son Bruno must depend on her elderly mother and their future looks bleak. Nearby, Julia Casepe has also battled TB for years. Tests reveal her children are infected as well, but they haven't developed active disease. In fact, one third of the world's population now carries the TB bacillus in their bodies, like a time bomb waiting to go off. Because this was happening in Peru, in 1991, the government set up a program called DOTS for directly observed therapy. The premise is, if nurses make sure patients swallow all their antibiotics every day for six months, they will always be cured. And this was the fortunate outcome for most TB victims, but not all. In Carabao, the crosses of people dying from TB began creeping up the mountainside as steadily as the squatter settlement itself. In 1995, the situation puzzles two doctors, Paul Farmer and Jim Kim working in Carabao through their non-profit group, Partners in Health. Peru had the best TB program in the world, and yet we were finding patient after patient after patient still suffering from tuberculosis. And we felt certain that there was a big problem here. To find out why patients in a model program are not getting better, Kim and Farmer send Peruvian colleague Jaime Bayona into the clinics to investigate. I asked the nurses if they knew of people that were sick with TB, that went every day to the health center to take pills, but were never healed. And the answer was, yeah, we have a lot of cases like that. Since medical records are confidential, Jaime reads the files upside down, searching for the telltale R's indicating patients whose TB is resistant to their medicines. I was shocked because the usual way of explaining drug resistance is, well, patients aren't taking their meds, and these patients had been compliant, and we had written documentation of their therapy. We then started asking some hard questions, and we asked the physicians, what's going on with these patients? Don't you think they have drug resistance? And the answer was a pretty stock one. No, there's no problem of drug resistance. DOTS is curing everybody. It's not an issue, it's not an issue, it's not an issue. Kim and Farmer are skeptical, but to prove otherwise, they will need lab tests. In 1995, they send the bacterial samples from several Carabao patients to a state lab in Massachusetts. The results are chilling. Most samples are resistant not to one, but to all five antibiotics normally used to treat TB. As Kim and Farmer suspected, it was not the patients that were the problem but dangerous strains of multi-drug resistant, or MDR-TB. Fueling the rise of TB are the millions of people now infected with HIV AIDS, whose weakened immune systems make them vulnerable. In Lima, TB thrives in shanty towns like Carabao, 
where tiny shacks cling to any patch of unclaimed rocky hillside. With impoverished families crammed into tight quarters, it's the perfect breeding ground for TB bacteria that pass through the air from victim to victim. Because the bacteria are constantly evolving, patients like Julia must take multiple drugs for months. And following the regimen is critical. As the drugs start killing the germs, many people begin to feel better and stop taking their pills. But a few germs are naturally resistant to the antibiotics. These survive, quickly multiply, and become the majority. Now, if patients restart their medicines, these resistant bacteria become tougher to kill. After an explosion of antibiotics discovered in the 50s, 60s, and 70s, the faucet is running dry. Of the hundreds of drugs currently under government review, only a handful are for bacterial infections. And that's bad news for the public. You know, in fact, I think they should be terrified. It's taken us 12 years to get tigacycline anywhere near the market. This makes these drugs commercially unsuccessful, and it really discourages other people from going into the field. So we've got to make the process simpler, faster, because drugs don't come cheap. One has to balance their risks in this industry. Where are you going to invest your money? And, you know, it sounds crass, but the fact is, um, if we were to stay in business by trying to find drugs that would lose us money every time we develop them, we wouldn't be able to find any drugs. If you don't treat it now, and if you don't spend the money now, you're gonna spend much, much more money later. And this is true for all infectious diseases. MDRTB is part of the larger problem, the crisis of drug resistance, and you just go down the list of the big killers, malaria, AIDS, tuberculosis, bacterial infections that take lives in hospitals, drug resistance is already a huge problem. So all of our best drugs could be obsolete with each of these diseases. We should be thinking ahead. The specter of totally drug-resistant infections now haunts the world. With no antibiotics to save her, Raquel passed away. Her son Bruno has also tested positive for TB. The problem is, the few drugs that cure MDR-TB are highly toxic and cause dangerous side effects. Rarely used, they are so expensive, the Peruvian government can't afford them. The price of treating MDR patients was so high, it was impossible for us. It was not only an economic problem, the treatment was too complex and difficult to manage. We couldn't justify the investment. Even the World Health Organization agrees. In the 1990s, the official policy around the globe is to treat those with curable TB and let MDR victims die. And we thought, but that's not public health. That's sort of like public death. And I said to Paul, it's really important that we do this because if we show that we can treat drug-resistant TB, we would make the case that these complex health problems for poor people are things that we're just going to have to deal with. You've got to treat people with MDR-TB to prevent it from spreading to others. With the authorities ignoring the growing threat, in 1996, Partners in Health sets out to cure a small group of patients on its own. These are people who have already been told there's nothing that can be done for you. And it was really sort of their last chance. Not sort of, why qualify it? This was really the last chance for people who were sick with these highly resistant strains. As more positive results pour in, Partners in Health's huge gamble pays off. 
From a group of patients considered incurable, 85% are disease-free. No one had believed they could do it. Now, foundations and companies begin to donate drugs legitimately. Partners' dramatic success would have a global impact. Instead of letting MDR patients die, the World Health Organization now recommends a treatment plan modeled on Peru, giving renewed hope to thousands of TB victims all over the world.